neuromuscular monitoring or monitoring of the myelin neural junction. Neuromuscular monitoring is essential in certain conditions only, namely after prolonged infusions of neuromuscular blocking drugs or when they use long-acting drugs and when surgery or anesthesia prolonged when inadequate reversal may have devastating effects as for example severe respiratory disease for those morbid obese patients in conditions where administration of the reversal agent may cause harm as tachyarrhythmias a failure maybe in asthmatics Patients with liver or renal dysfunction, the conditions in which the thermokinetics of the muscle relaxants may be altered, and finally in certain neuromuscular disorder as myasthenia gravis, eton lambert syndrome, and other CNS diseases. The principle of peripheral nerve stimulation is if a nerve is stimulated with a sufficient intensity, as we shall see later, what's called supramaximal stimulus, all fibers supplied by the nerve will react, and the maximum response will be triggered. It is normal. Now, after we administer the muscle relaxant or neuroblocking drug, the response of the muscle decreases in parallel with the number of fibers blocked and the reduction in response reflects the degree of neuromuscular blockade. There are five patterns of nervous stimulation, a single twitch, and this is used, rarely used clinically, strain four, the most popular, Titanic stimulation and post-titanic facilitation, post-titanic count, and double burst stimulation. And this is a single twitch, frequency either 0.1 up to 1 hertz, meaning one stimulus every seconds, or one every 10 seconds. And we see the response in the second diagram non bipolarizing muscle relaxants, there is a decrease in the twitch height, which is delayed for some, response delayed some, somewhat, and then it's maintained pressed for the duration of the non bipolarizing muscle relaxant. The third diagram, the black arrow denotes the administration of the bipolarizing block of the section of choline. We see the rapid response to the muscle relaxant here in contrast to the non-pressing block and the rapid reappearance of the twitch height in a few minutes. The train of force, and this is the most common modality used to assess neuromuscular blockade. It consists of four stimuli at two hertz, we mean two per second, repeated every 10 seconds. The ratio of the fourth, which the first one is called T4 to 1 ratio, or trait of 4 ratio, is used to estimate the degree of non depolarizing neuromuscular blockade. The fourth which is, is appear in order of frequency, the fourth, then the third, the second and the first, at about 80%, 85%, 90, about 90 to 95% residual occupancy respectively. Surgical clinical relaxation required between 79 95% neuroblastic blockade according to circumstances. 
and this means the presence of about two which is we correlate to good muscle relaxation however subjective just tactile and visual train of four evaluation will be inaccurate and this is the train of four stimulation as we see four stimuli are given every 10 seconds in a duration of about two seconds so the duration from the onset of the first to the onset of the second group is 12 seconds the second diagram shows the administration of non depolarizing relaxant you get a response with a single twitch and then when the effect of non depolarizing relaxant begins to terminate a second twitch appears then we have four twitches notes the train of four ratio which is the relation between B and A which is the fourth switch to the, to the first switch it is a train of four ratio which has, has important clinical, clinically because it is related to the adequacy of recovery and the administration of, of the reversal later, as we shall see later on in contrast in the last figure the depolarizing block the four switches Decrease to the same extent. There is no difference in the height between the four switches, and this is called no fade. While in the previous diagram of non relaxant, the amplitude of the four switches differs, and this is called fade in the response to non depolarizing relaxant. And of course, we can speak about trade of four ratio in the positive electric block because it is always one the static stimulation consists of a repetitive high frequency stimulation at 50 hertz or more 50 hertz means 50 per second what we have what's called 100 hertz 100 per second Tenic fade is a loss of contraction due during tenic stimulation. It's a sensitive indicator of residual neuromuscular blockade. It's a character of non depolarizing muscle relaxants. There is no tenic fade during depolarizing neuromuscular blockade. Tenic stimulation is painful, it's not suitable for awake patients. It facilitates the pre-junctional acetylcholine release and explain what's called post panic facilitation, which is a character of non depolarizing neuromuscular blockade, which means increase in twitch tension in response to a single twitch or train of four if we given three seconds following the tetany. Here is the tetanic stimulation at 50 Hz and we note the difference in the response between the non-depolarizing blockade and depolarizing blockade. In non-depolarizing blockade, there is fade in the response, tetanic, the tetanic fade. And when we give another single twitch after this tetany, we note improvement increase in the amplitude of the single switch then it begins to go back again to its low level and this is called post-tetanic facilitation when we look to the third diagram of the depolarizing block the amplitude of tetany decreases but the contraction is sustained there is no fate in the, tet in the tetanic response opposite to what occurs in non-depolarizing block and when we give a single stimulus twitch after such tetany, there is no improvement or there is no increase in the amplitude of the contraction. So there is no post-tetanic 
facilitation. And this important difference between non-depolarizing and depolarizing muscle blockade. Post tenic count. And this is very useful during intense neurovascular blockade in which there is no response to train of four. Fifty hertz stimulus for five seconds is followed in three seconds by repeated single twitches at one hertz. And the number of observed twitches is inversely related to the degree of blockade. It provides an indication as a time of return of the first response to train of force stimulation and when and hence when neuromuscular blockade is possible. It is a character of each muscle relaxation. This diagram shows the post tenic count and post a train of four. Here there is intense block, so there is no train of four response at all. But we give a tetany at 50 hertz for five seconds. Later on, three seconds later, there is we give a single twitch and we count them during intense block the post tenic count is zero the deep block we have one post tenic count then as the block is less in the three and then in the last figure one response of the 3 or 4 appears and at the same time we have 8 post tenic counts so the number of counts increases as the block becomes less intense for a given muscle relaxant the time until the return of the first response to train of force stimulation is related to the number of post titanic which responses present at a given time. It's called post titanic count. Finally, we have what's called double burst stimulation. And we have two variations of tetany that are less painful. We have either double burst stimulation 3 and 3. Also, we have what's called double burst stimulation 3 and 2. In the double burst stimulation 3 and 3, we have 3 point milliseconds high frequency bursts separated by 20 millisecond intervals and followed 7 and 50 milliseconds later by another 3 bursts. In the double burst stimulation 3 and 2, is similar to double burst stimulation 3 and 3 but the first three bursts are followed by two bursts instead of three double burst stimulation is more sensitive than train of four for the clinical evaluation of fate to mean visual or tactile this is double burst stimulation this is the process 3 and 3. You see in the figure, 3 pulses here. And they are separated by 7, 750 milliseconds. And clinically, we detect two contractions. Contrary to train of 4 and 4. Contraction or motions in some and the train of four ratio and the double burst ratio are comparable here. This is one 
0.2, which is the four ratio between the fourth and the, the first responses. And for double burst stimulation, of course, it is between the second and the first. And with recovery of from muscle relaxant, the ratio, ten of four ratio, and double burst stimulation ratio increases gradually to 0.4 or 7, 0.9, which is the figure that allow us to give the reversal safely. For another word. This 0.9 ratio indicates adequate recovery from muscle relaxants. There, are, there is different response of the relaxants to different patterns of stimulation. What does this mean? The peripheral nerve stimulator is used to differentiate between depolarizing and non-depolarizing muscle relaxants according to patterns and responses of stimulation. In non-depolarizing relaxants, repetitive stimulation either by train of four, double burst, or tetanus, we got fit, in which The amplitude of the different which responses is not the same. And we have what's called post tannic facilitation. Following tannic stimulation, the response to subsequent stimulation is increased. It's either train of four, double burst, or single twitch. On the opposite side, depolarizing muscle relaxants behave differently. There is no fate. So the trade of four, double burst stimulation, tetanus amplitudes are uniformly decreased at any level of the blockade. And there is no post tetanic facilitation. So if a tetanic stimulus 50 Hz per 5 seconds is given, then we repeat the train of four of the same gate which we obtain the same response as it was before. Such tetanus. An important point is if the patient receiving succinylcholine repeatedly or by infusion or if he has succinylcholine apnea, develop phase 2 block or desensitization, it will have the same character as non depolarizing block. There will be fate and there will be post tannic facilitation. These are the characters of nervous stimulator in use. The stimulus should be monophasic, rectangular. The length of each impulse is not more than 0.2 milliseconds, which is the common finding, 0.2, sometimes 0.3. Stimulation should be at a constant current rather than voltage. It should be badly operated, generate up to 6 to 70 milliampere. Polarity of electrode should be indicated, which is negative, which is positive, though it doesn't matter too much. And finally, and of course, it should be capable of delivering different patterns of stimulation, single switch, train of four, double burst, tetany. The stimulating electrodes are placed usually on the surface. Sometimes for a needle, and this is a figure to show that the surface electrodes. We have two electrodes, one positive and negative phase from the ulnar nerve near the rest. After adequate cleaning of the skin, of course. The commonest nerve is stimulated is the ulnar nerve. The rest, it produces contraction of the adductor pollicis muscle 
of the thumb. Other nerves can be used as the ophthalmic branch of the facial nerve, which produce contraction of the orbiculus oculi muscle. The peroneal nerve near the fibular head, and this produce dorsiflexion of the ankle. And finally, the posterior tibial nerve at the ankle, it produces plantar flexion of the big toe. There's different sensitivity of the muscles to muscle relaxers. Since muscle groups differ in their sensitivity to neuromuscular blocking drugs, the use of peripheral nervous stimulator cannot replace direct observation of the muscle, as the diaphragm needs to be relaxed in certain procedures. Recovery of the adductor polishes function which is used commonly through another stimulation doesn't exactly parallel recovery of the muscles required to maintain the airway. The diaphragm, rectus abdominis, laryngeal adductors, or pectoris oculi recover from new muscle blockade sooner than does the adductor polishes. And this matter of safety, of course, as we shall see now. What are the advantages and disadvantages of using a relatively sensitive muscle as adductor polishes for neuromuscular monitoring? During surgery, it is disadvantage because complete loss of twitch response and then of fall doesn't ensure paralysis of the diaphragm with subsequent hiccup and coughing. However, the use of post tenic count can be used to assess and ensure intense block. There will be zero post tenic count to ensure adequate blockade and make sure that the frame will not contract. On the opposite side, the positive side, overdosing is avoided. In addition, recovery of the adductor polishes ensures no residual effects are present in the diaphragm or other resistant muscles. Because of the drawback or inaccuracy of the subjective methods, namely tactile and visual, there are five methods that have been used to record the evoked responses. And these are mechanical response of the muscle, it's called mechanomyography, measurement of the evoked electrical response of the muscle, known as electromyography or measurement of the acceleration of the muscle response called axillomyography, to some extent similar to mechanomyography, but here we use acceleration. The fourth method is to measure the evoked electrical response in a piezoelectric film sensor attached to the muscle called piezoelectric neuromuscular monitoring. And finally, the fifth method is called phonomyography. And this gives a voice. Now, what clinical application of peripheral nervous stimulator without this complicated or recording equipment? It's, of course, it's used during induction, maintenance, or surgery and the reversal of neuromuscular blockade. For induction of anesthesia, after obtaining a supramaximal stimulus with 1 Hz, then we change to the of 4 because it's easier to be checked clinically before injecting the muscle relaxant to get a control. You have to better to wait 30 to 9 seconds after train of fall disappearance before endotracheal intubation. So, to ensure adequate intubation, the train of fall should be disappeared completely. 
and we have to wait about one minute at least. During surgery, recovery from depolarizing relaxation occurs in a few minutes usually. For non depolarizing, intense block, there is no response to train of four, and we make sure of this by using post panic count by producing a tip and five seconds, followed three seconds later by single twitch stimulus and we see the number of twitches of course the presence of zero we get intense block for adduct surgical relaxation for single twitch 80 to 90 percent twitch depression and for trade of four the presence of one or two responses will suffice however the use of volatile anesthetics and the patient health may allow lighter level of blockades to be performed. For fear of patient movement in such a surgical procedure, particularly during light level of anesthesia, the post tenic count should be zero. Use of peripheral nervous stimulator for reversal of muscle relaxants, at least one or better two or even three responses to train of force should be present. And of course, the greater the trade of four when reversed, the better. But remember that recent titanic stimulation will overestimate the train of four. Tactile double burst stimulation three and three is superior to the train of four. In addition, clinical signs of reliable reversal should be assessed. These are the clinical signs of post optimal new muscle recovery. Some are unreliable, which are sustained eye opening, protrusion of the tongue, arm left to the opposite shoulder, no metadal volume, 1.5 ml per keg, no or near vital capacity, 20 ml per keg. Maximum frontal pressure less than 40 to 50 centimeter water. While the most reliable are sustained head lift for 5 seconds, sustained leg lift for 5 seconds, sustained hand grip for 5 seconds, sustained tongue depressor test, and finally, maximum inspiratory pressure 40 to 50 centimeter water or greater. The problem of residual neuromuscular blockade if the trade of 4 ratio is less than 0.9 we have the following we have decreased chemoreceptor sensitivity to hypoxia function impairment of the upper pharynx, pharynx the subsequent decrease in swallowing also there is increased chance of aspiration Weakness to upper airway muscles and airway obstruction. There is increased instance of post operative pulmonary complications, in particular pneumonia, and finally, unpleasant symptoms of muscle weakness. Now, the question is should all patients receiving non depolarizing muscle relaxant reverse it? Yes. It seems prudent to reverse all patients receiving non depolarizing muscle relaxants due to the possibility of residual blockade and clinical weakness, even following only one dose of an intermediate duration non depolarizing muscle relaxant. What limitation of neuromuscular monitoring? Neuromuscular responses may appear normal. Despite persistence of receptor occupancy for new muscular blockade, train of four ratio is one even when 40 50 percent of receptors are occupied because there is wide individual variability in evoked responses. 
Some patients may exhibit weakness at time of four ratios as high as 0.8 to 0.9. They establish cut-off values for adequate recovery. Don't guarantee adequate ventilatory function with airway protection. Increased skin impedance resulting from perioperative hypothermia limits the appropriate interpretation of evoked response. We have some questions. I will not answer them because the answers are present in the lecture if you read it well. What is the trade of four ratio? What is the trade of four ratio which indicates the absence of residual neuromuscular blockade? What is the advantage of dull burst stimulation over trade of four? What is the significance of trade in the trade of four response following suctional queen administration? What are the reliable clinical criteria of absence of residual neuromuscular blockade? How to ensure an intense neuromuscular blockade using peripheral nerve stimulator? What are the problems of residual neuromuscular blockade? How to differentiate between partial non-depolarizing and depolarizing neuromuscular blockade? What are the five electrical patterns of electrical nerve stimulation? How can you use peripheral nerve stimulator during reversal of neuromuscular blockade? What are the advantages and disadvantages of using the abductor polished muscle for neuromuscular monitoring? And finally, what is meant by post-tonic facilitation and what is its cause?